Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We are at episode 718. This is being recorded on April 12, 2023. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Vanspernberg. And we have gathered here again today to uh, pay tribute to the hardware news of the week. And there's a new release, of course. <laughs> Just like last week, we had something new to talk about. We have something new to talk about again this week. And I was able to go hands-on with it before we recorded this. So that's something different. And uh, you can help drive this experience, this immersive PC perspective experience. It's a visual medium. It's audio. It's... It's two hours of good quality company. When it's got alone, good mouthfeel. It thoughts. satisfies yeah. your inner okay. child. Okay. Go to patreon.com slash PCPer to help uh, fund our endeavors here at PC Perspective. We would really appreciate it. All right. Well, let's move on to Josh's segment. It's called Burger of the Week. Please don't let us down. Please. But it wasn't It wasn't a burger. What? <gasps> it, was, it was a Cuban slash panini. Okay. So, all right. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we now move to Josh for his food segment. See, that's better because I had food today. It was good food. Place, uh, they didn't have a burger as usual. No, they had a Cuban, but they called it the Castro. The Castro is smoked pulled pork with ham topped with Swiss cheese, pickles, and a generous portion of mustard. Nicely toasted. Nice fries. Ham. It had ham and pulled pork. Juicy smoked pork. pulled pork. So this was a uh, a very filling, a uh, nicely rounded. I mean the the mustard and the pickles really did a good job on offsetting the the Swiss and the pulled pork and those slices of ham. Because you can roll up ham and take it with you in your pocket if you want, but maybe you shouldn't. But but don't. But don't. Yeah. 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 But no, this was uh this was a nice change of pace from their usual burgers. It was a little bit lighter, not nearly as much stuff, uh, but uh, still super super tasty. I see how you focused in on that pulled pork. They did a nice job on it. Mm-hmm. Would you like to use the word moist? No. Okay. Just checking. Our top story begins with a news post on NVIDIA's GeForce product page. Yes, they have announced a new graphics card, the GeForce RTX 4070. Ada at $599. Are you guys excited? Oh, (sighs) do I have to force it? Do I have to? Hmm. I don't hate it. Yeah, it, it it's it's not like uh, it's not like the RTX forty eighty, which is still an insane card for twelve hundred bucks. You know, forty seventy Ti. Yeah, at least it's under a thousand bucks, and it's going a little mm-hmm. lower. Well, that was the but this the forty eighty. Remember, that was kind of the forty eighty. So mislabeled at first. Well, the 4080 well, the 4080 12. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm not initially offended by this because let me tell you, if you've got like a 2060, 2060 Super, 2070, 2080 even, and you've been just waiting for an upgrade, this would be a significant upgrade for the price. If you've got a 3080, a 3070 Ti, a 3060 Ti, you're looking yeah, at this and much. thinking. Yeah, but Josh, Just like that. that's what? if you are somebody who's not interested in DLSS 3, if you have no interest in streaming with AV1, because there are some Improve technological there are features. improvements. Yeah, there's feature improvements, huh. but yes. As far as just raster performance, we're looking at a 3080 again. This is the 3080 12 gigabyte for 599 Plus DLSS 3.0, plus AV1, plus, you know, in general, better ray tracing, tracing performance. Yeah. So yeah. 
That, that's the short version. It does have some nice things. And that's like what I was saying. I mean, if, if you've got a 2070, 2060, 2080, and just been waiting, this is almost a no-brainer. You get, excuse me, four more gigs of memory. You get far better performance than the 2000 series. And, um, yeah, it would it would be a, a nice upgrade for a reasonable amount of money. I mean, we're never going to go back to a 70 series being $450. That's just, that's just not going to happen. In between just the cost of actually producing these things and uh, inflation. I mean, it's not, it's not 20 years ago where, you know, a high end card was 350 bucks. It's just, it's just not where we are. And that's, it's sad. However, uh, you can pick up a RX 6950 for that same price and get about 20% better performance and a 16 gig frame buffer. Not as good ray tracing performance, no AV1, but use cage scenario, AMD is still pretty competitive there. I mean, I'd love to try out a 4070 and, and see what it's all mm-hmm. about. I mean, I've got an old 3080 and, you know, extra two gigs of memory would be nice in things like Far Cry 6, where you are a little bit constrained by, by 10 gigs. Um, Hogwarts some of these others and i know that amd came out with a a uh, kind of uh you know a little marketing ploy talking about how you know 12 gigs of memory <clears throat> is not enough 10 is not enough 8 isn't enough uh they have a whole lineup of you know 16 gig stuff from $500 on up yeah i think we're going to so, that right that's, that's one of our yeah. topics topics today that will be sorry i, I didn't see that but no, I mean uh, technologically, uh, it's it's still a forty seventy Ti cut down, um, but at least this is far more reasonably priced than the previous ones. But uh, like you said, it's it's fewer SMs, so you go down from sixty to forty six, which means your CUDA core count drops quite a bit from seventy six eighty down to five thousand eight hundred eighty eight. Tensor cores, of course, also drop from two forty to one eighty four. Your RT cores drop. And the clocks are lower. I was thinking that maybe the clocks would be up a little bit to mitigate that, but you also get lower base and boost clocks than the TI. And it's the same memory system, though. We're talking 12 gigs of GDDR6X, 21 gigabit per second effective memory data rate, 192-bit bus, just like the TI. L2 cache, there's less of it. There's fewer SMs, so you have 36 megabytes. That's down 12 megabytes from the 48 of the TI. And the L2 cache is really how they were helping to offset the narrower interface a la AMD with their um, Infinity Cache. Now, seeing how this is the same AD104 as the 4070 Ti, I wonder what the overclocking headroom of this is going to be. It looks like there's room to move on the base clock, for instance, quite a lot. Mm, Maybe. I haven't tried any overclocking yet. Um, I mean, what is that? That's like five, 600 megahertz between... 4070 Ti and 4070 on the same 8104, so that could be interesting to explore. Yeah, that would be, actually. The really impressive thing about this product, as far as I'm concerned, is the power efficiency. The TGP, the total graphics power of this product, is 200 watts. I mean, think about the 3080 was, I think, 320 watts. So we're getting 3080 performance at 200 watts. And it's actually a little bit less than that in in real world. Like, average uh, usage is a little bit lower than 200 and it's really small. It's a small card. It's small like the old 3070 Founders Edition, the old 3060 Ti Founders Edition. You can't tell in this two, photo. Is this two slots? Yes. Okay. Here it yeah, is well, next I to mean, the 4080. Look at, look at the bracket. Jeez. It's only as tall yeah. as the bracket. It is a yeah. wee card, as Jeremy would say. So is, <laughs> so is it about the same size as like uh, A770? Because that uh, isn't an overly large uh, card either. Yeah, it might be, Josh. Yeah, I think it's about the same size. I've yet to touch one of the founders, even the from the the the, the three thousand series. Hmm. It's just weird. If you haven't, it, it's just a different level. If you go back to the even the ten series, which had really nice coolers, the twenty series that they changed everything up, and I didn't ever quite like the twenty series design. I think as much as the ten series, but of course they got away from blowers and stuff. But the, yeah, the, no, I like whole, the cooling design on that thing. The thirty That's series, see through. 
and the polycarb. Yeah. When I first saw that, that you feel it. There's a there's a heft to it. That it's it's like Apple designed a graphics card. I feel like there's some Johnny Ive DNA in here somewhere. You've got the metal <laughs> band around the outside with its chamfered edge and it's stainless steel, and you know it. Oh, come on, that's all plastic. The pe- no, it is not. No, are you? And this is looks- very heavy. This is all metal. Oh, it is. All right. These are functional uh, heat fins. This is a steel. Um, you can see the pipes frame. going through there. There's four of them. Yep. It is a robust card design. Yet petite. Did you say steel? Do you really think it's you steel or steel. is it aluminum? Aluminum? Kind of I don't know. Like I haven't. Yes. Uh, I haven't done any metal <clears throat> metallurgy. Uh, uh, metallurgy. I'm going to go with hmm. whatever was cheaper at the time was what they went with. No, it's they will go all out with these Founders Edition. Uh, yeah. They're, yeah. I guess we can talk about performance a little bit, although we already kind of know where it is. One thing that might be interesting, and I didn't retest any 20 series cards other than the 2080 Ti on this new platform this year, but if you look at this card in relation to, Josh was talking about an upgrade from a 20 series owner, like a 2060 Super, 2070, 2080. Even if you had a 2080 Ti, this is a pretty big jump. Yeah. Even though I did not actually pull the 3080 out of my production machine and go back and retest it yet, the performance of this card in general will mirror these 3D Mark results where it, I'm not going to keep repeating it. It's just, it's going to be right in between a 3070 Ti and a 3080 Ti. And I really need to get the uh, 6800 XT back on these charts. If you look at other reviews out there, I think where it places on the chart depends on which version of the 3080 they were using. Uh, Steve at Gamers Nexus uh, was using a 3080 for the win three EVGA card, which has a factory overclock. And so on their charts, the 3080 looks to be faster and everything. If you go to hub, uh, they have a stock 3080 and basically it just trades blows with the 4070. Sometimes one's ahead by a couple frames, sometimes it's behind, but it's right there at that performance level. And it doesn't matter what game, whether or not there's DXR. It, sometimes like, I think it was in cyberpunk at the ultra preset, I don't have any resolution scaling or DLSS. It had a bigger advantage over the 3070 Ti, but it was still, what is it, uh, 11% behind the 3080 Ti. And that was the absolute best showing for it. So I, I think I actually see, saw some rumors that it was going to match the performance of a 3080 Ti. No. Yeah, it, no. It targets the 3080, and it gives you better um, like DLSS and ray tracing features mm-hmm. and support. So. <clears throat> and it's cheaper and uses more less electricity way less electricity uh, so is there a little little space cheap. for for overclocking on these? i don't know or is it a tough didn't see any i'll have to i think i saw one review where they overclocked it a little bit but i mean it was it was like 100 megahertz with a little bit faster memory and you know they got a couple yeah. of percent out of it but but of course you know if you if you design a board from the get-go to you know operate at some higher speeds and cooling, then you know maybe you can push that up a little bit higher. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've, I've done a little bit of overclocking testing with this generation of cards, and it's extremely disappointing. And then I've followed Der Bauer through all of his exploits and trying to overclock like the 4090 mm-hmm. and so on. And there's not a whole lot there. And his most of uh, his exploits have, have tended to center around reducing the total power and then seeing how you have very little impact to actual real gaming performance. So... It, they were very, very aggressive with power and clocks already. So it seems like it makes a lot more sense to just back off a little bit than to try to push it beyond these already kind of pre-overclocked levels that it seems like this generation has. But actual power draw, though, here's here's the readings from the PCAT hardware pass-through where I'm testing like physically at the slot and at the PCI Express connectors. And it's hovering right around the 200 on average the highest momentary spike I was able to measure was 221.8. Still very reasonable. And the average power was only 192.3 during this test. So it, it it's extremely efficient. There, You will not need a beefy power supply for this one. It, it I think the recommendation is 650 watts. You can get away probably with a good 600, but depending on what your CPU is. And, of course, this is Founders, so it has the 12-volt high-power connector on it with the sense pins. But it, there'll be partner versions with just the 
two eight pins. Yeah. Josh, weren't you saying there's even one that might only have one eight pin? Yeah, I think Zotac uh, in their announcement <clears throat> they showed. I mean, if it, if it's a two hundred watt, then they can do a single eight, which is one hundred fifty, mm-hmm. and then the PCI power, which is seventy five. So that's two hundred twenty five watts there, unless I'm screwing up my math. But if if they mm-hmm. want to do some any kind of overclocking, then they, they either need the twelve volt high power or uh, or two by eight. But yeah, I saw one in particular. It was uh, Zotac's twin something or dual something, mm. okay. um, and it's their low end card. <clears throat> and it has a, it looked like it had a single eight pin. Hmm. So that might be interesting to uh, to explore. Yes, we should reach out to uh, Zotac and say, hey, send Josh a card. So you yeah. can have an eight pin experience. All I ever wanted Josh was a card. video card. Is that so much to ask for? Yes. Yes, it is. It is yeah. actually. So I mean, really. anyway. Just to quickly wrap up this review at PCPro.com, the uh Founders Edition is the one we've tested so far. It's like we've been saying, it's a it's a five hundred and ninety nine dollar product that matches the performance of a $699 product from two and a half plus years ago, but offers more features and stuff. Like, you know, you get the better ray tracing. But let me ask you this. One and stuff. Two and a half years ago, were you able to buy a 3080? No. For $649? No, because the world is a horrible place. And, you know, <laughs> Ethereum destroyed the GPU market for enthusiasts and da- damn near killed the whole DIY community. I mean, this... Mm-hmm. How many people have trying. just given up at this point? I, I, <laughs> I'm happy that we still have people interested in this hobby, but it has become a very ah. expensive hobby. It's, it's like it's pricing people out. You're really teeing up our next story. You know, speaking of, is this hobby dying or is it living? What's going on with PC sales? They're down, but hey, everyone chill out, says PC Gamer. Jeremy Laird at PC Gamer. Why does everybody need to chill out? It, shouldn't we panic? Isn't that the way that the, that the social media-driven stuff is these days? I'm not oh. sure you're being sh- shrill enough announcing this. I, mean, I don't know. I, I, go I, first of all, the, <laughs> they're citing The Verge here, as reported uh, well, by The Well, it's Verge. actually yeah. well, IDC uh, and mm. Kennelis. 30% so. first quarter versus same period in 2022. But I don't know if that's in Which was not a good year idea. either. Yeah. Well, you may have a point there. I mean, there's a chart. Well, the first uh, quarter of 2022 was pretty good. It, it, it uh, all fell yeah, off okay. cliff in yeah. Q2. It cannot help that we don't have mid-range yet. Entry level and mid-range in the current gen. Uh, these companies <clears throat> keep on pointing to <clears throat> look at last gen products that fill these gaps that we haven't filled in, you know, however many years. But there is there is no Radeon card below the 7900 XT this generation yet. And NVIDIA just released and we just finished talking about their most affordable card this generation yet and it's six hundred dollars so when we get the 200 and the 300 hundred dollar cards that actually offer decent performance and have the features that people want maybe that will cause some people who've been waiting since before 2020 to buy a new graphics card to build up that new system around it how many people are still on am4 and have no interest in am5 you know, just things like this. Just it's not been a great series of launches, except for people who want the latest and greatest. They want to be early adopters. They don't mind paying six, seven hundred dollars for a processor and another like six hundred, seven hundred dollars for a motherboard and another eleven hundred dollars for a graphics card. Good for them, but that's like the <clears throat> tiniest percentage of the like top one or two percent of the enthusiasts. But that's what we want to read about. That's what we want to see. Oh, okay. That's that's that's, that's the news. But if you read further mm-hmm. into the article, both of the major readers and predictors of where is this market going and where has it been and past this prologue and ah, mm-hmm. the house is on fire. You know, sales are probably going to uplift later this year. And that's we're coming their prediction down is. from record sales. Like <clears> you go true. back past yeah. to yeah. like 2019 through 2021, and then a kick for uh yeah and sorry in a quick in 2021 like sales went through the roof so saying that they're down about 16 percent when they were up by about 15 20 percent previous just not immediately previous yeah it's hard to really say that once again the pc is dead 
Long live the PC. Hell, Except hell. Dell <clears throat> did a little better than most people. They seem Dude. to have scooped up the Apple people. Because Apple oh, didn't do very the- well at all. 40% year over year fall off. And uh, I think market share based upon, I can't remember which uh, agency. 11% is, is to 8.5 at Canalis. Oh, uh, others say 8.6 to 7.2 uh, for IDC. Oh. But all the same, oh, this, this is this is a uh, big pain. But you know what? I'm just going to fall back on it. Everybody's just waiting for M3. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Do, does I anybody right. even understand totally. M1 versus <laughs> M2, M2 ver- David I know which our, number's bigger. David, and that's yeah, how you're I an shop. Apple. Listen, you're an Apple enthusiast. <laughs> of course, Apple enthusiasts know the difference. But uh, <clears throat> yeah. David points out that Apple had both the pandemic bubble and the M1 was so successful in our YouTube chat. That's yeah, absolutely true. right. And, and look, they brought back I.O. They brought back I.O. on the newer MacBook Pros, and that's neat. They heard what a cries. Novelty. The MagSafe port oh, is also. Oh, the magnetic charge. Okay. Yeah, yes. I do like that. Yes. That was which, a good idea. But no, from the day job, like, yeah, everyone blew their budgets on the M1 because, oh, it's amazing. Because now what they want, I want the Intel Mac. Okay, well, which model? No, I just want the Intel one. They have no idea, M1, M2, M3. And these are data scientists. But they yeah. just know, they've heard that, <laughs> nope, those ones are really good for some of the programs they run. And like, for certain versions of the programs you run, and if you were also to get this other stuff that you kind of need to be able to do it, yes, that would be a thing. So we can give you the two-year-old one, the M1, and you'll be happy because it's the Intel one. They, wait, they call the M1 the wait, Intel one? Wait, you're calling yeah, it the Intel they, one? They, they they literally call it the Intel one. Wow. I'm I know. not sure I follow. It's oh, instead of M1, they're oh, okay. calling it Intel one. Yes, because oh. this is the best part about it is okay. that Apple's gone to their own silicon, and they're convinced that, and I don't know who it is that spread this in the company, but that's what it is. Every time they're on board, no, I want the Intel one, and they mean the new Apple Silicon. You live in a very strange part of Canada. Well, no, this is mostly (laughs) Americans, uh, but I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Statisticians are interesting. I'll just put it that Mm. way. AMD wants to know, are you an enthusiast? Nah, (laughs) I'm too old. (laughs) Do you crave the best experiences possible in your games with no expense spared? Well, apparently you have to these days. Uh, (laughs) Are you the type that keeps on top of what is the best GPU? Do you like to tr- track GPU benchmarks and reviews? Wow, it's like they... Yeah, they went cheesy poofs. Are yeah. you looking over my shoulder? Yes, yes. The great news <laughs> is that AMD has some of the best graphics cards for gaming with leadership performance features and pricing that will keep your gaming rig future ready. And of course, this is AMD jumping all over the fact that NVIDIA just released a product in 2023 that dares, that has the audacity to have less frame buffer. I, oh, AMD, I just want to. I just want to point out the timing of such a blog post. I mean, does each company kind of has to do a thing when when one does one thing, somebody else does so, something else? So you have the the forty seventy, and then you have this blog post from AMD going, yeah. "Oh whoa, oh whoa, are you an enthusiast? Uh, don't buy that forty seventy. You You're it, going to regret it." It's a little bit more polite than saying you call yourself an enthusiast. You call yourself an enthusiast and you're buying 12 gigabyte graphics cards? Hold on. More memory matters, reads this headline. (laughs) Game studios are launching new titles that are taking full advantage of modern hardware, or they're just incredibly poorly optimized uh, ports from consoles. This shift in the industry enhances your experience with movie-like textures, complex shaders, and higher resolution outputs. But these new advancements require ample video memory. Ample. Look at Not this. Apple. Ample. Peak memory usage in newer games. You know, the, the narrative has shifted to you need 16 gigabytes of memory because yeah. look at this. So, well, so says AMD. I mean, well, just read the So read says their... a lot of places. Okay. All right. So the and Resident I, I Evil seen, 4. I have seen some results that frame rates, average frame rates don't suffer much, but what you do get is... That one percent, the five percent frame rates mm-hmm. really take a significant drop, and if you can handle that, then be happy. But you know, Far Cry and, and is a definite. Like, again, Far Cry Six it requires twelve if you want to use the high res textures and, and all the bells and whistles and RTX. Well, not RTX, but DXR. Yeah, 
And I believe that Red Dead Redemption 2 was another guilty culprit for that. It would eat mm. all the VRAM you could feed it. Well, the important thing is you don't have to worry about any of that if you buy AMD Radeon graphics cards. Because even going back to the previous generation, which currently helps fill out their product stack, which can continues to offer oh. nothing below the 7900 XT in the current generation. If you look, their 6800, 16 gigabytes. 6800 XT, 16 gigabytes. The same with the 6950 XT, the current darling. And the 7900 XT and the XTX both have, uh, tw well, 20 and 24 gigabytes. So it's... It in NVIDIA, of course, you have to go all the way up to like a 3090 or a 4090 to get that 24 gigabytes of yep. memory. So it's it's very impressive what they're doing for the for the price. And especially as we mentioned earlier, the 6950 XT can be found for less than the 699. In fact, I thought I saw another slide where they had lowered it down to 649, but maybe I'm imagining things. No, we were uh, chatting earlier and some people yeah. were finding it for 650. Even in Canada, I could find it for like 1060 which is like what I paid for the 6800 XT. It, it used to Good be... Poor man. It used to be that... Well, I am if, after I bought that. If you wanted to use... Like when, when the Vega... Uh, not the Vega. It was the Radeon 7 came out. Yeah. With 16 gigabytes of memory in early 2019. They announced it at CES. And it was very difficult to find a way to actually use that much and not not even like playing at 4K Ultra, we were still not even coming close. And now here we are, just you know, four years later, and there's this raging debate on is 12 gigabytes even enough? We need 16. You couldn't even use 16 in gaming a couple of years ago. There was no way to do it unless the game was just allocating 16 because it was there. And now we've actually seen examples where games' performance suffers. They're sh this is odd. They always do this. It's like it's a little too late now to say, and look, RTX 3070 Ti at $639 only gives you 8 gigabytes. Well, that was instantly irrelevant the morning that they published this if the, 30, the 4070, the 4070 yeah. comes out with 12 at 599 But anyway... It's, it just uh, weakens their argument. It doesn't destroy it, but it does it does weaken it. Also, yes, show me right. where you can consistently get the 6800 XT for 579. It does say well, pricing uh, based on lowest market price on Newegg as of 4 3 2023. I, I think yeah, everything you know, he's not going to bring up this, Newegg, is he? Well, I, I think. Okay, I do, think you, do, you know what, do you know what I'd linked the other day? I'm, so, I'm sorry, Brett. A ASRock 6950 for 599. That's Josh, that was actually my point that I was going to make, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exactly. And you can get it right now for 619. 609. 609. Oh, 6, 6, uh, 6, $629, $20, uh, $20 rebate. But if, like Sebastian, you live very close to a micro center. Oh, I don't. You could, you could, yeah, it's okay, an outrageous never lie. Never mind. Forget it. <clears throat> I, I didn't mention it. I complain constantly about how far away micro center is. <laughs> now you're just taunting me. Oh, yeah. Google, this may shock you, but they're going to kill a product. <laughs> they're going to kill Dropcam. <laughs> so and Dropcam Pro. So what is this? We're getting Nest Secure hardware next year? Or are they also killing that? I... They're also what? killing. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Two birds, one stone sort of Nest thing. Okay. April 8th of next year. You have a whole year to find an alternative. Yes. You know what? That makes it so much better, doesn't it? But isn't that because isn't it great that months. the hardware you bought just won't work? It's not that they won't be updating yep. it. It's just that it, it will be e-waste. It year. will phone home and home will not be there. And so, don't worry, so about drop cam. Months, they'll come out with something and say, oh, don't well, worry. It's, it's Nest. Buy this one. It's we'll Nest. totally support it for forever. Right. They're, they're killing the drop cam line, but they're, they're going to actually be giving free Nest cameras to drop cam owners who want to switch. I don't oh, okay. know if they're okay. feature parity or not, but you know, how much further out is the, you know, this Nest line, this really isn't doing it for us. We're probably going to get out of that. I, I wrote in the show notes that I picked this line up from someplace that Google is known as our lady of perpetual beta. And I kind yep. of agree with that. Unfortunately. So continue to buy Google stuff. You'll see what happens. <laughs> I like to use the free <laughs> Google stuff. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then I don't care as much when it goes away. Like Google Reader, that was that was how's your, how. How's your Stadia game work now? <laughs> but Google Sorry. Wave, I mean, come on, the, the circles, the circle. <laughs> it makes me happy that Google Stadia died. So once and they're they're moving they're moving this uh, what's called the Nest Secure customers. You're going to get ADT. So yes, well, oh, nice. you like it or not, it's got. Yep. Name recognition, at least. So, I mean, you have to sort of hand it to them in such a way that like, okay, that's going away. We're going to give you these free other things. I don't know if they align from a future parity. And sorry, you invested in a pro- uh, uh, you know, product or uh, a service I, that you no longer offer. No, Here's another company that we're going to... I'm they giving them the, the best. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> we move on to some Intel data center news, but not this story, actually. Earlier... Serve the home. Exiting Breaking news. Business. Gone. Oh, no. Intel confirmed to STH that it is exiting its long-term server business. So at no. first, this seems like and what? selling no, it to the place that make all their motherboards. It's just no. It's just the the actual Intel branded servers. Yeah. Are being sold to MyTac, parent of Tyan. That's kind of like IBM selling their PC business to Lenovo, the company that was making it anyway. But no, not that one. Not that canceled product. This is Data Center GPU Max 1350, which feels like a relatively recent product, Brett. And it's already being axed. Weird. It's a kind of a mid-tier one. Um, Josh, what do you think of this? Um, it makes sense because if you know if you know Intel, they like they like their SKUs. And in a somewhat changing market, I, I believe the, essentially they were going to have a higher end version that was going to be water cooled, but then they kind of cut that down a little and made an air cooled one, and it made the thirteen fifty redundant, and so they chopped that out of their lineup, which is interesting because again, Intel likes their SKUs, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know it's like a four hundred fifty watt unit that they're getting rid of and they're kind of replacing it with a, a faster still air cooled one, the 1450 later this year. So what, when, when a CPU comes out, they've got something like 28 to 35 CPU screw skews that, that focus either through, you know, a ton of them in, in mobile and then a bunch more in desktop and, it's just not, you know, these five or six SKUs that you would expect to see. There's, I mean, they, they just get it every little niche. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it's what they do. And uh, they're taking kind of a step back on that because these cards are expensive. And uh, so far, their software uh, is doing some interesting things in the data center. But, you know, they don't have a whole lot of partners yet. And throwing a behind load of, of SKUs at anybody, I mean, they're just going to step away as like, we can't support all of these products. So this makes sense. You got to, you got to be mean and lean and yeah. Otherwise you end up. So, they're, that makes sense. so they're not exiting the server market. <laughs> no, not at all. Of course not. No, that's silly talk. One problem uh, that is not helping the PC industry of late is the fact that, as our second is reporting here, last gen ultralight laptops, this, you know, the stuff that people use for business every day, are nearly as fast as new models and much cheaper. What a surprise. Would you pay 42% more for a 7.8% productivity boost? Absolutely. Well, not. if it's a graphics card, maybe. Yeah, that's what people do. But a laptop, no. How often does last gen serve just as well and at a better price point? Like right now, a brand new uh, next gen laptop brings you almost nothing but expense. Ultimately, it, for work, it doesn't make any sense to go from one recent generation of Intel to another, certainly. And there's a whole other world out there. I don't if you know this or not, but AMD makes mobile processors too. So maybe that should be explored. Before you start or saying, well, cut the, 8th gen cut Intel the ties, versus 9th or 10th gen cut, Intel. Cut the ties to Windows altogether and install. Oh, that's right. Is Apple makes this incredibly efficient 
product. Well, minus Apple. Sure, there's, there's that when you want to really get away from Windows, but just install Linux on your on your Intel. Oh, I see what you're saying. Or, or, or oh, to actually regain laptop. usability from an older yes. machine. Much Indeed. lower overhead, yes. more efficient. Yes. Very more, much more efficient. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, now that the prices have come down, buy a bloody Raspberry Pi in a really nice 3D printed enclosure and they'll never know the difference. Let's pause here for a word from our podcast sponsor. Are you a person with a knack? A condition characterized by an extreme intuition about how things work, especially now in the computer systems and software space? Well, people like us can often find it difficult to settle into just the right role for our careers. Well, Bloomberg is out there building a world-class information network for financial professionals, and they're looking for engineers to join them. Personally, I know that I've always wanted to work on challenging projects that had real impact on actual shipping products and services, and sometimes that has just not worked out. While I've not yet worked for Bloomberg, they're forward-looking and are building tools their clients will come to rely on for systems that matter in solving real-world complex problems across global capital markets. They're working in real-time market and enterprise data with sophisticated analytics that are touched by over 350,000 professionals. Bloomberg systems operate at tremendous scale with over 300 billion, yes, B is in billion, market data messages daily. And you can get involved. You're not going to get locked into a proprietary shop either, as Bloomberg's engineers are active members of the open source community in both leveraging and making commits back to those projects. Learn more about the opportunities that await you by visiting Bloomberg.com slash careers. That's Bloomberg.com slash careers. We're back and we're going to talk about MSI's confirmed mm. cyber attack. <sighs> I mean, this sucks for them. They basically got yeah. many, many gigabytes of their BIOS and firmware uh, stolen, and the the crew that did and it, it wasn't by Der Bauer. No, it was not. Uh, I think they named themselves. We want money. Uh, uh, have demanded money in exchange for uh, not releasing the source code to all of their BIOS and firmwares, which then nefarious groups could then use to um, figure out how to uh, take advantage of badly programmed aspects of it. So instead, they'll uh, just take the money and, and never release it. They promise. Yes. So if you're Please an MSI owner... A few podcast back where we talked about the unkillable uh, viruses you can put in UF, UF, UFEI now. Let's so not yeah, focus. this is a bad Let's thing. Not, it is extremely bad. And I'm being a little bit facetious on this. It's an extremely bad thing. Um, but basically if you have an MSI, anything, just make sure that you're very, very critical. Just make sure that you're going to the MSI site to pull it down because I believe they also stole the ability to, uh, sign some of these downloads. So if you're getting them from places that aren't MSI at this point for a lot of uh, firmwares that are out there that you're looking to upgrade, you may, may not be getting the real thing. And I'd be very, very cautious and very wary of that. It may sound logical to just always get your firmware from the source and double check if you're actually on the right. <sighs> you know what? But that may not be the first link. Forum, entries and yeah. there's people are sharing like oh here's a beta bios because yeah sometimes those bios files were shared in places like that before they were even available on the download page for the motherboard on this actual support page so well you know now well, which was nice now microsoft times. is supporting is is pushing bios updates on <sighs> things that isn't that great really whether so, you like it wouldn't it be or great not? If, if somebody were able to sneak that in and then pass uh, all the checks mm-hmm because they Microsoft probably wouldn't sign them themselves. They would assume that the uh, provider had signed them, and as long as that checked out valid, they would yeah. push it. Wonderful. Push, push it, it real, real good. good. Yeah. Cody, it's continuing security corner here. Cody has disclosed a data breach after forum database for sale online. Reads this headline at Bleeping Computer. Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to say that, no, our stuff totally wasn't stolen when people are like, okay, so I just bought some for 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> now, thankfully, it's their forum stuff. It's okay. not uh, It's not uh, anything that Cody sold, um, at least as far as I knew. And besides, they don't exist anymore. But yeah, if you were on their uh, bulletin boards back in the old MyBB days, they probably have uh, all of your posts, uh, including private messages, and even if your staff, 
email addresses, salted passwords, but hey, um, God knows how. Stop using the same password for your bank. Yeah. (laughs) They're going to do a portable pass reset, but then again, what does Cody do anymore? I don't know. You know, I I, I Uh, prefer the unsalted passwords. Uh, You know, my my sodium They taste better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it can't oh, be about the taste. little cursing it's, in the sw- in it's just for, spicy language. Look for your uh, health. MD5 forever. Just salt it. Uh, it was over four hundred thousand different users uh, that got their bits stolen on this one. Hmm. We're sorry. Is basically, you know, what they're going to offer on this. We're sorry. Hey, yeah. but you know who who cares? Apple cares. I know who. Apple care. You can buy it for your device and then they'll charge you to fix it, but they'll charge you less than you, they would charge you if you didn't have Apple care. Oh wait, sorry. Something else. Apple fixes recently disclosed zero days on older iPhones and iPads. Emergency updates to backport security patches were released on Friday. I don't think they went back far enough. Really? Yeah. How far back did they go? Um, I think one of the oldest ones is uh, iPad mini gen four. Oh, that's it? Air oh wow, that's yeah. Wait, are you saying my second gen iPad Mini that's still kicking around here somewhere is uh, vulnerable? Sus- is susceptible to a zero day drive by uh, attack by visiting a maliciously crafted website? Um, okay. Yeah, that's kind of kind of what I'm saying here. I also <laughs> own one of those, so yeah, the feeling is mutual. It's basically useless at this point. If you have a Gen 2 I, uh, iPad Mini, it's amazing how slow it got over time with software updates. It's yeah, bizarre. True. And I'm sur- I'm a little disappointed that they only go back as far as Big Sur from the macOS perspective. So well, I think it's a lot th- as far as Apple's concerned, as I alluded to earlier, nothing before right. Big Sur matters. And if you're mm-hmm. not on at least Big Sur with your 32-bit apps and your, you know... I, I have to look up what year that was. We make fun a little bit here, but that is kind of pretty old. But I just wish it was kind of pretty older. old, really. You think Big Sur is old? Let me look it up. <laughs> People are Googling 2020. Things. Yeah. 2020 is November, not November 12th, 2020. It's, it is November 20. It's not even three yeah. years old. Yeah, it is. It is kind of new. Okay. Let's. Uh, I thought it was older. So you could have got a 3080 at the same time as Big Sur. Yeah. No, no and one. And then not run 80. it because Apple no hates yeah, you could NVIDIA. Have been able to not buy one. And then no one so then you buy a Mac Pro for forty thousand dollars with two, you know, Vega graphics chips in it the, that are the H2 only people who got thirty eighties were the reviewers. That was it. Well yeah. I got one. Yeah, Josh yeah, bought one. Two back channels. But I bought it. I bought one. Yeah. Okay. It's time for gaming quick hits, and you know you can get your Star Wars fix. In fact, get all of it. Get all the Star Wars for twenty one dollars. That's a yeah. savings of seventy nine dollars. That's a savings of all of it. Well, that would be free. Is it free? <laughs> Practically twenty one dollars. It's, it's almost free. Where is this? Just everywhere? Is it GOG? Fanatical. Is it... No, it's fanatical. Uh, Battlefront I don't think two? two is there, but all the downloads are the good Battlefront Starfighter. Oh, Empire twice War, Empire War One, yeah. but not two. Uh, Jedi Academy, which is like really kind of silly but fun to play. I'm sorry, I thought this was all the Star Wars. It's not all the Star Wars. It's okay, just I may have exaggerated. Fourteen games for twenty one dollars. That's a pretty good price. And no Exile. Sorry, it's not out yet, so you're not going to get a deal on it. Okay. And none of the really old stuff like TIE Fighter and X-Wing, but... I noticed know, that's that, too. Diff- that's why I was... Well, you got to really the old games for that. Yeah. The last time I bought... Well, the, the time I bought it, it came with a t-shirt, too. Oh, wow. I got an mm-hmm. X-Wing versus t- TIE Fighter t-shirt. Oh. From GOG? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, really? I missed out. Yeah. Huh. This is he's, many years back. He's special, though. He's, oh, okay. He's, he's famous and he's Canadian. Person. He's Canadian. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm surprised they shipped it. He has like he has long hair, and people think. He's and he's one of the handful of Canadian media personalities. There are very few. Some of these games are from back when you could actually <laughs> rent the CDs to play games. Mm-hmm. To rent the CDs. Yeah, I, I, I went down to Hastings back in in the mid '90s, and Ooh. you could rent PC games because you know. Nobody had quite figured out. Okay. 
people had figured it out, but it was harder to get to cracks back yeah. in the day. And so you could actually, you know, rent CDs and do what you do. Your machine play it for a couple of days and then oh, return man. it, and then either buy it or just think, no thanks. Yep. No you CD crack. Oh, no CD crack. Or look back. They Loft were crack literally was called back. that. Yeah, you the, got the no CDs. Days. Man, I'd be looking for those no CDs all day. And then, of course, you have to look. be careful where you get your wares, and then you know, bam, true. Windows infected, and you got to blow it away. But I there never helped some make of sure them. that there's a safe distribution of wares at mm -hmm. all in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. at all, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna underestimate how much some of those sped up gameplay based upon other people oh, that I good would watch Lord. play them. But it was like 100 percent faster. With the no CD, than it even was games that I physically own, I would yes. prefer to use one because if you have a 52x CD ROM drive and <laughs> that thing doesn't even need to be there, but it has to do its little check and you have to listen to that <laughs> sound, no CD, it's dead silent, same gameplay experience, <laughs> boom, just done. Yeah. That's how I first played Diablo, as I rented it from Hastings. That's crazy. And it took never, me a year to, to save up the money and, and actually get up the gumption to buy the whole damn thing. It was all downhill from there. I have never you seen these games for rent. I used to rent like PlayStation games at my local video store. but That that made more sense to me. I, PC game rentals. Oh, CDs. PC gaming, was you could totally rent it. I oh. never saw that. Okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Our next story... Retro-inspired shooter Warhammer 40,000 bolt gun blasts onto the PC in May. This actually looks pretty cool. <sighs> Pixel art. Is this fully path I trace, it's, though? I, I hear it's look. really twitchy, and they did some really great work on putting the monsters together so they blew apart in a very satisfying way. Oh, okay. Yes. Satisfying is a, a buzzword of millennial culture, so that's good. Yeah, yeah it's very satisfying. No, this is a uh, pretty it's millennials. This is Gen X stuff. Okay. <laughs> Designed by boomers. Half-Life Alex is now fully playable without VR hardware. This is official now because I thought there were mods to do this months oh, ago. Oh, no. This one's definitely from 4-11-2023 if you check the date. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was going to say, this looks feels like an old story, but okay. Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. All right. All right, All right, I will take your word for it this time after checking carefully. Right, it's, that's right, carefully check. 411 2023, okay. So what's the story here? Finally, you can play Half-Luck Half -like Alex without mm -hmm. VR headset. And that's pretty much it. Jump in, get on board. My neighbor has this it. Is... And like, I did want to play Half-Life Alex. Yeah. But it was like, it's VR and it's like, ah, it's a pain in the earth and we don't have anywhere good to play it. So I never played it. So I'm kind of a little interested in not doing it. Or be like playing it without having to do the VR thing, but at the same time, I kind of want to do the VR thing. See, I thought there were. I don't know. This says uh, there is now. There no were mods, mod. but it was there. There have been keyboard and mouse mods for this for a couple. Of yeah, years, but they've been they? not so. Hey, oh, this is awesome. Okay, it's time for a Jeremy review. And by the way, Jeremy, I want to say uh, nice job with the photography this time. The depth of field. Thank you. The lighting, I know it's natural lighting, but I like that natural lighting. Hey, you got to pick the right time to do it, though. Exactly, exactly. It's so crucial. You don't want the really, really yellow golden hour light no. where everything looks like 7,000 Kelvin. You want that mid morning. Slightly before or slightly after. Yeah. A little bit of Just cloud cover is good because that's your, that's the, the world giving you a diffuser. You know, it's, it's, you you did and a it's great Vancouver, job with that. So oh, okay. So we it's get, always cloudy. It's Good always diffusion. diffused. Always diffused. Yep. Oh no, it was uh, there wasn't a uh, cloud in the sky. But you don't like the vertigree? Because we had to include that. It, it just sort of lined up perfectly. What is that? It's the copper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Copper. Oh, it's, it's quite. It's quite nice. It's quite nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's artistic. I, I was looking for that. So yes, this is good. Fozzie that we ran into when they sent me the uh, TB10D. That uh, I was very, a little bit sort of, why does anyone need a little stereo amplifier but the size of a paperback novel? Like, what is even the point? Desktop speakers. Yeah. And so that was what they're saying is, you know, you put in two decent desktop speakers. We, we can do, if you can power it, uh, 300 watts a channel. 
And so I'm like, all right, fine. Hey, I've never heard of you guys before. Send it out. Uh, you do bare wire on the back, which is how I roll. Uh, you can do banana plug if you prefer that. And it arrived and I set it up and it, the, the poor Kenwood is still sitting there. I haven't had the nerve to throw it out yet. I never stopped using it. The quality of it was ridiculous. Like for something that was selling for a hundred dollars, uh, a company they'd never heard of it's they're based out of China. Apparently they've been in business for quite a while, but it was just sort of blew me away. And so they reached out again, um, yeah, roughly a year later to say, Hey, uh, would you be interested in checking out our new one? And okay, well, I'm kind of curious. So it's, uh, the BT 20 a pro they've already released the BT 20 with non pro. It comes with a gorgeous copper volume knob, knob at knob. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just, it's a little thing, but it really, really does it for me. It's got Bluetooth on the back and they've gone through and redone the entire innards. They picked up a brand new uh, Texas instrument chip. The, where are you here? The uh, TPA 3255 class D, which is a really impressive class D chip. Uh, when you look at it, it's fully capable of 300 watts per channel. They've dropped in four and... I don't know exactly how great these are, but any 5532 op amp chips, they only welded in two of them. The other two are replaceable. And they gave me a list of the op amps you can pop out and replace with these. So, okay. Uh, and I brought my neighbor, who's a musician and a bit of an audiophile down. I'm like, all right, we're going to do the transplant here. It was a, a gasp-worthy moment. Both of us sort of went from... Yeah, that old one was good to, holy crap, the separation on this is ridiculous. You said, how much? Well, they're selling for 99 bucks. And uh, for the rest of the month, they, hey, if you're watching this and you click on the link, there is a 20% off coupon for uh, readers and watchers of this show. Because I, I know I sound like I'm shilling for them, but I mean, they did send me two free amps. They didn't demand I say anything nice about them. They didn't have any input on this. I'm just seriously, it's a kilogram. Uh, and I just for a visual aid, I'll, I'll pull out the original one because literally I have not stopped using these damn things. 300 Watts this big. And that's you got bare wire that's peak power, back. right? The 300 is yes. peak. Okay. Yes. We, we can get into that. It will do about 150. Yeah. Uh, if you want, uh, they do actually, uh, the power supply that they ship it with is good for about uh, 120, 121. But if you want, they actually tell you uh, a couple of other ones. You can go for like a 24 watt, eight uh, amp. They will put you up just over 200 if you oh, really? really want to deafen yourself. Hmm. Because the thing is with that one, the new one is like, no, if I crank it up above 50%, my speakers start to die. The, the SNR on it is, is less than 108 dB. Uh, total harmonic dis distortion is less than 0.005%. And I don't think they're lying. It's it's ridiculous. They've done one nice thing on it. Uh, the potentiometers on the first one, because you just get treble and bass control. So on these ones, they were free spinning. On those, they, the pots have a definite middle. So it will click into the neutral position. When you crank it all the way to the bottom, you can almost completely reduce any of the treble or any of the bass, depending on what you pick. It's almost completely gone from the sound. You go the other way, and it gets quite impressive, but again, doesn't distort it. There, and yes, Ruru 2, I am talking about the, the BT-20A Pro. The Bluetooth thing is a really nice addition because one of the things I was thinking about these was, Hey, this is you that this is the amp. That's the power supply. As long as you can convince someone else to carry around two good speakers, you could literally set this up anywhere. You have power, you throw Bluetooth into it and away you go. I don't know. These guys do a hell of a job uh, to the point where I sort of hate talking about them because I sound like I'm chilling for them. But no, it's, it's pretty impressive. And 
Uh, yeah, Kent, it's going to be about that because what I have is an ungodly mix of uh, six pairs of eight ohm speakers. Mm. And it doesn't care. It drives them all quite happily. One of the nice things about Class D is that you can drive very low impedance speakers as well. This yes. is a tiny box, and it doesn't care if you have a 4-ohm load. You can go down to a 2-ohm load. So, This is a glass of beer. This is the amp. <laughs> if you're not quite sure about the size here. Hmm. It is freaking tiny. Remember back in the days of Ozentech when you can swap out op mm. amps? And, you know, yep. there's actually, there there is a, a difference. I remember when I got one of the first cars and I decided to try to experiment with it. And uh, it came out with some, um, some fairly low-end TI op amp chips. And they were okay. I mean, their specs were fine. Um, and, and to give you a, an idea, you can get like six op amp chips you know, pretty high end for about 18 bucks. So they're not terribly expensive, but when you're, you know, dealing with thousands and thousands of boards, if you can cut down, you know, a cost by 30, 40 per, uh, cents per, per chip, you know, it makes a big deal. And so I got some, some, uh, Burr Brown op amps, some higher end ones that they were, um, they were, you know, probably the more expensive ones that you could you could buy at that time as just singles. And they come in those little plastic tubes that, you know, so it doesn't bend the uh, the legs off the op ants. And I swapped them out, and by God, I I did hear a difference. I mean, it it was a you know, it it, it does color your sound a little bit more, and so you know, I, I would. I would say, you know, is, is better differentiation, a little bit more color to it, um, stereo improved a bit. And so, you know, it was, it was a worthwhile endeavor for not a whole lot of money because op amps just mm-hmm. aren't that much. But it's, you know, it's, it's a chip that if you're buying thousands of them, you know, 30, 40 cents per chip uh, turns out to be a lot of money. So take that with a grain of salt. It'll be a little bit of work to take the thing apart to uh, replace the op amps, but hey, if you're into that sort of thing, give it a shot. Oh, I thought you did. I thought you had your neighbor oh. and you were listening ah. to it. I thought you guys did. No, uh, I just swapped no, the we're you just swapped the old. Yeah, no, I just swapped the from the original one they sent us hmm. to this one, oh, and okay. that oh. year has made a hell of a difference. And there I is see. one other thing that I should mention uh, that I totally forgot which is that it's got uh, a bypass. It has a properly set up, uh, what, we're, uh, what do you call it? Pre-out? Pre-out, thank you. Now, can that go so it, to drive a subwoofer, or does that just turn this into a pre-amplifier? Either or. You can, okay. you can put it into a powered speaker, Okay. be it a sub-amp, a subwoofer re- regardless, or you can uh, plug it into a power amp. At which point, the ability for that chip to be able to handle that much power becomes, you know, sort of a thing. Mm-hmm. And again, for $99, that's a lot of features, and the quality on it is just ridiculous. I want to get one of these things just to play with it. Like, it's just... I honestly give it a shot. I, I've got integrated amplifiers that would do the job, but they're, compared to that, they're huge. Mm. And I don't always have space on my desk... Or under my desk or whatever and for, you know, a big 17-inch wide or whatever it is, 14, 15. Well, if we can convince customs we're related, I can ship you the old one down and you can try that. Mm, that is, no, that's okay. <laughs> Look at that coupon code. It's $20 off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we should hit, make sure that people know that, that uh, we should get that posted in the chats or the channels that there's a coupon code that coupon they sent well, us i was busy yes. talking well gosh my wife my child are break. sick can you give me coupon mm-hmm. i give you a coupon <laughs> it's in the review you take you take coupon visit pc perspective at pcper.com on the internet and you can oh. read this review get that coupon code hmm. direct link to whatever and look at the pretty pictures and uh Thanks, Jeremy. But we are going to move on 
to pick the clickety clickety Sorry, of the week. Speaking of clicking on things, speaking mm. of recommendations for stuff to buy, Josh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't even know what I recommend it anymore. I'll show you. Look, here it is on the screen. <laughs> okay, show me. Oh, oh, yeah. It might be a uh, 7900 XT that you can now get for $779, $20 off Ooh. of that previously low, low price of $799. 20 gigs of memory. A little bit better DXR support than the 6000 series. A lot more render. Uh, rasterization uh, uh, performance and yeah uh, all the memory bandwidth that you could really want it's the uh, ASRock 7900 XT uh, Tai Chi no it's a, it's the uh, Phantom X right yeah so it's it's their, their step above the base AMD it's not the uh, Tai Chi that is their top of the line graphics card uh, so this uh for seven seventy nine, I mean, these things just keep sinking lower and lower in price, and that's a wonderful thing. So think about it. You know, AMD. I think officially they say that that card is eight forty nine, but obviously more and more places have it for eight hundred. But seven seventy nine, that's unprecedented. Yeah. Yes. And a bold color scheme too. Speaking bold. of bold, Jeremy, do you have a a bold pick for us this week? No, it's black. Oh, okay. Oh, bloody hell! It's it's twelve hundred and fifty bucks up here in Canada. What? Hold on a second. That's not quite as amazing. Uh, see, because I'm. Oh no, with not this, this one. Oh, it's not this one. States. This stay at Canada. No, stay in Canada. Why? For now. But I want to go to the U.S. Well, okay. Because it's almost two nickels a gigabyte. Oh. We don't have cents in Canada anymore. Uh, ignore the 97 cents there we got rid of the penny but still but that is two gigs of pci 4.0 for almost 10 cents a gigabyte for canada this is pretty damn good uh in the states i didn't check but if you want to i'm sure it's a better deal. it's 149 oh ouch oh, but, hey, i mean yeah no they never let you drink li- directly link they want you to uh yeah, shop again is. Sorry, one fifty nine. But I mean, the, the uh, SK Hynix Platinum, it was like five forty nine. So going from five forty nine, which is still a good drive, but down to two ten or two twenty is yeah, that that's a good deal. Brett, you know, there's nothing that I like more than power. And a lot of times power comes in the form of electricity <laughs> and electricity is a wonderful mover of electrons. And those electrons push a lot of things around. I mean, it pushes uh, microwave ovens. It pushes bits in your computers, photons on your, on your screens. And you don't want that to stop when the power company stops sending electricity to your house. You want that stuff to continue. And here is one of the only ways to make sure that that continues besides like having your own generator is a battery backup. Oh, Woot that's how you're going with this. It was, that was Woot Josh-esque ranting, by oh, the thank way. You. Thank you. Thank what? You about Who ran? Thank you. Thank you very much. I felt like this you is... were channeling Josh. It's like, I like power, and a great way to get yes. power is through electrons, and those come yes. through a cable, and they go to a... And you if you what? don't pay it's, the power I, bill... I, do, I don't do that. Pay. That's oh, not okay. me. Stop sending you the electrons. All right. So this is an 810 watt unit, 1350 VA, and it's line interactive. And what that means is that if there's over voltage or under voltage, this system in between you and your sensitive electronics, your very, very touch sensitive electronics, it's going to be protected. Uh, it's not going to last a tremendous amount of time with only, I think it only has a single battery, but uh, 810 watts for it'll probably last 10 or 15 minutes on a typical PC. Now, um, what would you say to the sine wave snobs out there about this product? I would say that you're going to put up with a little hum while you're on the uh, on the battery backup, but you're going to uh, thank the fact that this is there because that little blip that would have snapped your computer off, you're just going to sail straight through. You're going to be able to shed it down gently, like bringing it in for a landing rather than that sudden snap off that you're just going to regret. Yeah. I they don't, don't like that. Uh, catch on fire anymore. They failed to catch on fire. Most of the time. That is correct. Good. 
My pick this, this week. Cyber Power did have a an issue. Oh, you don't have a this, pick. I have a pick. I have this a is, pick. This is bull. a new one. This okay. is bull pucky. <laughs> oh, no, seriously. My pick this week is a product that looks like an air purifier, but it's actually a router. This is the Asus Zen Wi-Fi. And it is actually quite impressive. The ET8, they give you two identical units in the box. The current Asus eStore price for this is $329.99, which sounds a little steep, but these are tri-band Wi-Fi 6 routers. You get the 2.4, you get the 5.8, you get the 6 gigahertz, which, by the way, I've been experimenting with 6 gigahertz in my 1929 Cape Cod. It doesn't like uh, lath and plaster walls and going around <laughs> corners and things very much. No, no, it does not. It I likes line of sight. Old. <laughs> Drilling holes might work. So it's uh I haven't done I thought I thought this was a mesh network with multiple nodes. I mean what's it the is. Yeah, but it doesn't like the mesh in between the <laughs> oh, meshing the plaster lath. You have you have uh three channels, so I brilliantly thought that I could use the six gigahertz channel for the connection between the two. That was mm. not good. Because it, it worked in the same room when I was testing nine feet away from each other. But then when I moved it around the corner to the dining room, it no longer connected to yeah. node one. Yeah. I, yes, I boys think, and girls. Uh, the waves don't about- even go through about an eighth of an inch of skin. Yeah. No. So. Yeah. But if you're the type that worries about that and the microwave radiation, you know, turning you into some sort of a zombie or something, buy a house made uh, previous to yes. the mid seventies. And yeah. you literally live in a Faraday cage. Yeah. It's getting broadcast <laughs> TV inside you my do. house is almost impossible. <laughs> when they went to the high frequencies with uh, HD TV, I couldn't get anything anymore. Anyway, um, it's, it's super easy to set up. It's all app based. So if you have Android, iOS, whatever. And I, I don't like doing this kind of stuff, but I'm like, oh, whatever, I'll use the app. And they connected to each other, and I got it going. And you can do wired backhaul if you want to, so I have that going. Oh, gosh, yes. Yes, so, definitely. Uh, hmm. So instead of playing around with, like, which of the three channels, I just let it auto-select channels. I have three uh, two different uh, three different networks. Look, and you're already frequency deficient inside of your space. You definitely should be doing wired backhaul inside of that exactly. Faraday cage. And I, and I, <laughs> I acknowledge that. And this is one of those devices that has the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet but only as the WAN. Nice. So if you have uh, mm. two gigabit fiber, you can take advantage mm. of it. I only have one gigabit fiber, but anyway, it's uh, it's working quite well now that I have the wired backhaul. I actually have the other one uh, down here uh, in my workspace and the other one's upstairs. And I get perfect Wi-Fi reception down here now instead of getting like fringe Wi-Fi like I used to get in my little corner. So it's... Uh, very nice. It's nice. all conducting through that's, that copper pipe. It's a good name for it. Fringe Wi-Fi. I've never heard it called yeah. that, but that makes total sense. I did a site survey uh, using a MacBook Pro with my old router. I went to every corner of the house and took like decibel readings. And I have that all mapped out. So then I'm going to do the same thing again with this mesh network in place. But I have noticed slight improvement even in the wired performance. Versus the hmm. Linksys WR something or other that I was using before. Uh, when I transferred the podcast after last Wednesday, I was hitting 112 megabytes per second to the NAS Ooh. for the first time ever. I had was seen this at the one Josh approved one gigabit speed one gigabit of the same cable. <laughs> I had typically mm-hmm. only seen 110. Maybe 111. I saw 111 right off the bat, and then I actually saw it peak at 112. Like, I'm getting... I was leaving performance. You saw it? That's that's a game-changing. Yeah. Your life is never going to be the same. a second a week. let me just ask the most obvious question here. Did you swap a cable at any point? No, 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 no. Everything's the same. Just checking. Just checking. Hmm. The allegedly Cat7 cables that I bought on Amazon from some (laughs) no-name seller... Most 59 cent cat seven cables hey, are cat fine. seven, which are probably cat six, and they just say seven on the package, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm rocking with. All right. Uh, yeah. Everything's fun and games until you give it a 50, 
or a, it, a 90 degree turn and then yeah the, i just was yeah. amazed at how poor the range of six gigahertz radio like, waves can we bring back 900 right. megahertz please i just have a oh, 900 megahertz best. wireless phone i could walk yeah. down the street with that thing and i'd still be on oh yeah call. they did in not theory, you could go a mile with 900 megahertz that was just yeah. in theory brilliant not anymore although That's if all. everyone had one then it interfered but josh still. how tall yeah. is the frequency for 900 megahertz is it what's how like in feet measured <laughs> i it's really like, couldn't sizable. tell you it's sizable all right it the amplitude is... you're talking about yes, yes 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 do you modulate your amplitude it depends on uh the size of the doors that i'm walking through oh, right okay yep you amplify your modulation Mm -hmm. I think it's time to call this uh, show. Thanks for watching (laughs) and listening, everyone, to another episode of the PC Perspective Podcast. And we'll come back again next week and do it all over again, just for you. Because, you know, you demand it. Yeah. You order it. Yep, they do.